going on everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal Spass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and it's time for a Raw review. No more, uh, can't keep telling all that truth about Daniel Bryan. People just, they keep getting upset. But let me say, on, uh, on the more positive note, um, a couple more days, it's... Uh, more than a couple more days, you know, ten more days or so, uh, to toss your questions on to uh, Ask the Phoenix a couple of videos ago. For the next one, the next one will be up in about ten days or so. Um, as I've said, the reaction for that, uh, the feedback for the Ask the Fe the whole Ask the Phoenix thing that I'm trying to do and get up off the ground has been absolutely fantastic, and you guys have been absolutely fantastic, so that's great. Raw was also fantastic, in my personal opinion, if you don't mind me saying so. I just, uh, I went through a couple things today to make sure I didn't miss anything. How about that? We started off with a S.H.I.E.L.D. promo. The S.H.I.E.L.D. promo was strong, and everybody had their licks to say, and, you know, Rollins talking about the strength of the S.H.I.E.L.D., and Dean Ambrose talking about, you know, being knocked down, but being up, being right back up again. Roman Reigns, really sort of reinforcing what we already know, being that uh, of the S.H.I.E.L.D., he's the one that's going to get the first push, and he says, you know, we're going to make you believe in the S.H.I.E.L.D., and I'm going to make you believe in me. Oh, yes. So he's the big, the big dog in the fight, so to speak, of the Hounds of Justice. Anyways, we start off, we have um, them doing their promo in the ring, doing all this, Roman Reigns making himself stand out, uh, Evolution comes in, they leave the ring, they stop mid-promo and go and kick the crap out of Evolution in the parking lot. Fantastic. RVD versus Jack Swagger is supposed to happen? Zeb Coulter cuts a promo on... Uh, on Adam Rose, but you know how this guy is hanging out with all these rejects and bunnies and he's not the kind of person that would be in Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger's America. All the typical stuff that makes Zeb Coulter great. Zeb Coulter is great. Z Jack Swagger himself is absolutely irrelevant, is he not? Um, before the match even starts, uh, Adam Rose does indeed come out with the whole Exotic Express and everybody and Roddy Ra and they, you know, he goes up on the apron and Jack Swagger goes to knock him off and he does the stage dive. Everybody catches him. He goes around the ring. Roddy Roddy Ra, some more. One kick, one frog splash, and RVD wins. Goodbye, Jack Swagger. You are irrelevant. Fantastic. We get another awesome promo video for Paige, who's just great. If I can't have Lita and if AJ's gone, 100% on the Paige bandwagon. But what I will say is I was pleasantly surprised by Alicia Fox. When we had up next Paige versus Alicia Fox in a non-title match, Alicia Fox actually cuts a promo. Somebody gave her a microphone. It was interesting. It was a gamble, and the gamble worked. Because she came out and said, there's something about you. There's something about you we don't like. And everybody in the locker room agrees, we just want you to leave. And, you know, she starts telling her off, and Paige is all, like, quiet and taking it. And then Alicia Fox nails her. It's, it's a cheap shot, but it's a cheap shot to the to the face. It's not like a cheap shot from behind, so I don't know if you really call it a cheap shot, right? This entire match, in all honesty, is just Alicia Fox kicking the crap out of Paige, and Paige taking it. Um, there's a really, really wicked move. I, I'm i going to say a bow and arrow, but I don't mean a bow and arrow in the sense of the actual wrestling move called the bow and arrow, but uh, there's a point where Alicia Fox is on the ground, her feet are up in the air, she's got Paige arched along her feet, because Paige is facing upwards and her back is being arched this way, and she lets go of her arms and the arch turns into a face plant. It's a really, really good move. It's a really impressive looking move, especially for a Divas match. I'm not saying that because I don't like the girls, but I'm just saying for a Divas match, we don't typically expect something like that. They don't usually get the chance to pull off something like that. Uh, a bit more grappling and Paige slips in a quick Paige Turner for the win. Paige wins, obviously. They're making her look like a million bucks. Alicia Fox, however, freaks the hell out, freaks out, out outside, starts smashing things, starts pulling cords out, slamming her hands on the table, um, where's my rematch, I'm championship material, da 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 da, and it's funny because you see her and she's getting angry and she's getting really into her own on a, on a rant as she's going around ringside and she starts bopping her head and doing her shoulders and doing all this kind of thing and she's doing it and she's been cocky and she's gone along and she's stolen Bradshaw or JBL's, uh, cowboy hat while she's juking and jiving around while she's angry, but she's juking and jiving and getting her beat on to Paige's music, because Paige is the one that won the match. But it's all good. If Alicia Fox is going to be our next crazy chick, I, I'm kind of okay with that. You know, I'm sure Deluxe Man loves it, but you know, it is what it is. 
Speaking of Delex, man, we get a promo. It's all the recap of what everything that Daniel Bryan has had to put up with from Kane. It's, I've said it already, it's See No Evil Part 3, is it not? Then we have Daniel Bryan come out. And before I say anything, I know. I know what's coming. The same thing is coming that came when Daniel Bryan's dad passed away. I'm going to get called a bad person because I'm bashing Daniel Bryan the character when Bryan Danielson's dad passed away. Character, real person? I'm just going to say, Daniel Bryan, the character, has a broken neck, apparently. Um, Bryan Danielson, the person, is also apparently going for spinal fusion surgery or some sort of um, neck abnormality surgery today, I think. Now... Let's look at both sides of the equation here. No, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Yes, Daniel Brian Danielson is a good pro wrestling talent, and it's sad that he's not going to be on television. The Daniel Bryan character will not be missed by me. Can I say that? Can I say that without getting castrated on social media? Oh, yes, probably not. But here's the thing. I don't want him hurt. I really wish to get him out of this stupid storyline with Kane. They had kayfabed him an injury to, you know, go back, retool, maybe come back as a heel, maybe drop the title and give it to, oh, I don't know, somebody who's busted his ass and hasn't had a decent title run yet, like maybe Ziggler. Um, have Brian come back as a heel, attack Ziggler, push Ziggler as a face, push Brian as a heel. Everybody gets a fresh coat of paint and there's still no John Cena. Everybody would go home happy. But no, we can't do that. It's WWE. He's going to get the typical heroic comeback from injury return that Cena usually gets. Oh, yes. But he comes out, he goes like an angry underdog promo, typical, very, very cookie cutter. He even, for everybody that has hated the past couple of videos I've done, he even admits that this is what it's like to be John Cena. Oh, yes. And then he talks about the surgery. He talks about how he'll be back. He has a feel-good, hope-inspiring moment for the Daniel Bryan, the Yes Movement. And, okay, your sentimental moment is over. Get off my screen. Wyatt's and Cena. We see a recap of everything the Wyatts have done to Cena, all the trippy shit with the, the kids' choir and the kid at Extreme Rules that's fantastic. That kid, apparently from the dirt sheets, has now left the WWE to go do voiceover work in the UK or some crap like that. Can you believe that? After doing two creepy little spots with, like, a cult leader in a choir on a wrestling show, the kid's got, like, voiceover work now to do in the, in the UK. Fantastic. We have Cena and the Usos versus the Wyatts, which is a rematch from Smack and uh, I hate to say this about a Wyatt's match but uh, uh, there's one cool spot in this match and on, in all honesty I, Cena had the crap ass STF on I believe it was Rowan broken up by Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt we all know this for a guy his size has a really wicked looking running scent on and he does the running scent on on John Cena who is applying the STF to uh, Rowan I mean, shortly after that, we get a random pop-up. Rowan, Ro Rowan eats the pin. Obviously, Cena's team wins. Uh, they're celebrating on the rampway. Eh, you know, the Usos maybe ha are the only ones in the WWE that have brighter gimmicks than John Cena. Is that is that sad? Is that sad? Are we going to see John Cena coming out one day in those shiny pants to match the shirts? Is that a thing? That might be a thing. Um, that's scary, isn't it? Meanwhile, you got Wyatt, who's almost on the verge of a breakdown in the ring, and he's kind of crawling to the edge of the ring, crawling to pull himself up on the ropes with the microphone in one hand, holding himself up with the other hand. And all he says is, thank you, John, for helping me see what I must do now. This is why I love Bray Wyatt. In the face of the John Cena steamroller, spit a couple words out, John, you haven't won. It's awesome. It really, really is. And you know what? Even as popular as Bray Wyatt is, I will still say he's not getting the credit he deserves for the promo work that he does. Evolution is back. They've re, um, recollected themselves from the beatdown they got earlier in the night. They cut a very, very, especially after hearing a Bray Wyatt promo, a very generic promo. And it's one of those, it's one of those promos where they're not really talking to the shield. They're not really talking to the audience. It's sort of fake talking to each other. You know, Orton grabs the microphone. Hey, Hunter, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of these guys. And Batista doesn't even get a microphone. So he's just yelling and Triple H, he singles out Roman Reigns as if we don't already know that he's the one getting the push and says, we're going to take our time with you. We're going to be sadistic with you and you're going to, it's going to take a long time, all that sort of thing. They get jumped 
by the shield. They get beaten down by the shield. They run up the ramp. Batista throws a fit on the rampway, says he's tired of this shit. We're gonna, we're all gonna fight again at Payback, but I want Roman Reigns tonight. The two biggest dogs from both factions on the main event tonight. I'm a happy kid. James, my buddy, Fear the Spear 1990s, is, in his own words, having an absolute nerdgasm over this match. Everybody wins. Moving on. Nikki Bella versus Natalia Neidhart. And I will say, I will admit, you guys have heard me talk about, uh, on Facebook, Pro Wrestling is taking over Facebook, also known as Puitov. Not my group. Uh, groups run by uh, a fella named Abel, who's really, really good, supports this channel a lot. One of the things they have going on is a constant championship where we've all done a lottery. We've all picked a couple superstars to be on our team. I think mine right now consists of Paul Heyman, Dolph Ziggler, Roman Reigns, Nikki Bella, and AJ Lee, because I'm, you know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I actually had a winning week this week. I mean, like, I've already gone ahead and seen what happens on main event. I've already read the SmackDown spoilers, so I know I'm winning this week. Let's just say that. So it put a whole different spin on this match, Natty versus Nikki, for me, anyways. But what I don't understand is the Total Divas, obviously it's going to be part of the Total Divas show, because nobody involved in the Raw show was told what the hell was going on. The rest of the cast of, uh, of Total Divas were out there, and they had cards, like they were going to you know, rate stuff like a dance contest or whatever, but they didn't look like they were told what to do with the cards before they got out there. They're just kind of juggling them and fumbling them. And then uh, Michael Cole made the dumbass comment that they're holding the eight upside down, and it's just like, oh, oh, Cole's not funny sometimes. And JBL called him on not being funny and on being an idiot, which is which is which is good. And that's what JBL is there for to call Michael Cole when he's an idiot. The match itself was really good. The match itself came from a spot on Total Divas where Natty gave Nikki a painting that she had done of Nikki and John Cena, and it's it looks like something out of a coloring book. And Natalia's feelings are hurt, so she's sad, and that's why they're having a match. <laughs> Apparently we had our wrestling match earlier, we had our Divas match. Now, if that's how they're going to break it up, th that's cool, that's fine, because that means none of this bullshit is touching Paige, none of this bullshit is touching the championship. Spaz is a happy kid. Spaz is also a happy kid when the match turns out to be a lot better than I expected, and Nikki gets the win. I get three points for my Puitoff lottery, and everybody goes home happy. Then we have to get some shit, don't we? We have to get some shit. We have to boost... Ginger John Cena, a.k.a. the Flaming Jar of Mayo, a.k.a. Sheamus, because he's the new U.S. Champion. It shouldn't matter that Sheamus is the U.S. Champion. All that should matter is that Triple H took the title off of Dean Ambrose, and that's all you need for storytelling purposes. Take it off Dean Ambrose and retire it. You know, Dean Ambrose, we don't like you, you're not a good champion, and you've tarnished this championship so much that we're going to retire it. Uh, you did something even worse than you gave it to Sheamus, which means now we have to push him. And, uh. So he squashes Axel and Ryback back to back because he's Sheamus, and you know, in the words of Mark Henry, that's what he do. I uh, nothing to say. I don't care about anybody in either of these. I don't care about Sheamus. I don't care about Axel for the life of me. And Ryback is corny comedy at best. I know the guys on Twitter well, still sit there and have a fap over the over the one time he told a sound tech to throw all his clothes in the shower. And that's just strange for everybody involved, isn't it? Oh, yes. Stephanie McMahon, my favorite troll of life, comes out trolling Daniel Bryan, pretending to be concerned about his neck, da 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 da, but I have to do what's best for business. Bryan, can you please come out here? We don't know when you're going to return, so I need to tell you something. Clearly, she's going to strip him of the belt, but instead of Daniel Bryan's obnoxious music, we get the pyro of Kane, which is just as underwhelming as Kane drags the lifeless body of Daniel Bryan out onto the rampway, and we go to break. So Kane has taken a guy who's already got a broken neck and broken his neck again, or something like that, and Stephanie McMahon tries to convince us that she's going to be a good person, and it's wicked, wicked trolling by Stephanie McMahon, but in this scenario where your champion and the number one contender are involved, the most interesting person in the scenario is Stephanie McMahon, and that's never a good thing, is it? Oh, no. Um... We come back and we have the very typical, everybody's sad, everybody's scared, we're loading them up into the ambulance. Brie, or the, whoever the token, you know, trophy wife of the time is, will sit at the side and cry and scream and da-da-da-da. And she shows that she's got the balls in the family when she's the one that goes up and shoves Stephanie and basically tells her to fuck off. Which is fine. If we're going to get Brie versus Stephanie McMahon, 
is it bad that I want Steph to win? Like, really? <laughs> a whole bunch? Like, I, 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 anyways. In a match that was a whole lot more fun than this crap, we had Fandango versus Dolph Ziggler, and I don't care what you say about either guy. Yes, Ziggler always uses. Yes, Fandango is a goofy-ass gimmick, but they're both fantastic in the ring. They put on a fantastic match. Fandango has Layla with him now, and that's great. And they've got some... Yeah, they got some Christian and Trish Stratus, you know, from WrestleMania's past uh, type of vibes going on because they're locking face like there's nobody's business, are they not? Which is great. Layla tries to interfere, tries to distract Ziggler. It backfires. It backfires, and Ziggler actually wins a match. I get three more points in my lottery. It's fine. It's wonderful. And instead of being pissed off, Fandango calls Layla back into the ring and and uh, says something corny to the effect of, I may have lost the match, but Layla, you won my heart. And they eat face in the ring, which is fine. And it's wonderful. And they love each other. And they tell each other that they love each other. And this is all great. But what kills this for me is JBL freaking out about it on the sidelines, talking about how it's the most horrible thing ever. Stop that right now! My mama watches this show! And then they, in fact, do go to break, which is, which is fantastic. In the... I'm only coming out here to get my ass kicked segment of the night. We have Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who bumblefucks to the ring and says something about Legends House of absolutely no actual value. It's a cheap plug for the network, I guess. He's interrupted by Rusev because Rusev's not American, and that's his gimmick. And Lana talks about Vladimir Putin some more. They come down, they threaten Hacksaw Jim Duggan, they break the 2x4, which is very symbolic, I guess. Hacksaw starts freaking out in the corner, and he's rescued by Deluxe Man in tights. Oh, wait, no, it's the former Intercontinental Champion, Big E, who also gets owned by Rusev, so that's kind of appropriate, and that's the end of the segment. So Big E is useless, no longer the champion, and failing at saving an old man from Rusev, who is now WWE's new, slightly more in shape, great Kali. Is he not? Oh, yes. Cody Rose versus Damian Sandow is kind of unfortunate, because it was a great match, but I didn't write anything down because I was too busy watching the match. Um... They're still putting through this whole thing with the Rhodes Brothers. There's tension. When they succeed, they're fine. When they don't succeed, they're fighting with each other. Even if it's a singles match, which is which is weird. And so, what I find more strange, and I had to have somebody send this to me afterwards, because I don't have the WWE Network in Canada, apparently they're trying to turn Sandow into some kind of CM Punk pipe bomb dropping reality guy, because he came out on the uh, WWE Network for the Raw pre-show screaming not into a microphone, because his microphone got cut. He was in Josh Matthews' face like this, so that he could be talking into Josh Matthews' mouthpiece, saying, you know, he had some kind of real truth to tell. He didn't really get into it. But he's all talking about how he's been misused, and this is the only way he can get a mic time, and this is the only way he can get time on screen, and, you know, when people hear what he has to say, he'll be stuck on superstars fighting Yoshitatsu. So that's, that's great. And then he tried to cut a promo before this match, which was cut off by Cody Rhodes in all reality. Great match. Cody wins. I'm always going to be happy with Cody Rhodes winning a match, but I really wish they would stop burying Sandow. I really do. The Magneto thing a couple weeks ago was could have been the nail in his coffin, couldn't it? Really. Honestly, honestly. We see Wyatt in the back. to cuts another tremendous promo. I'm going to stop trying to recreate Wyatt's promos when I do a Raw review because I can't I really can't do them any justice. And you know what? Anybody else on a wrestling review type forum, unless you're going to stop your video, play a clip of the Wyatt promo, and then get back to your video, stop trying. Because of the people I watch, nobody's been, really been able to do it yet. Especially Twit. Wow. Oh, yes. Um, basically, bottom line, he's challenged Cena to a last man standing match at Payback. Now, my buddy James, once again, Fear the Spear 1990, go check him out. Uh, suggested to me over a private message that it should be an I quit match. Only if you want Wyatt to lose. WWE is never going to have John Cena utter the words I quit. Now is that right? No. But it is a fact. They are never in a million years going to have John Cena elect to quit a match. 
falls down anywhere, it's fine. You can get the Wyatts. You can introduce a new you can introduce a new Wyatt family member. You can bring in AJ Lee, who is rumored to be the sister Abigail of the group, which I think that would be fantastic. Ch costing him every time AJ Lee's been involved in a John Cena match, she's cost him a match against somebody who's realistically better than him. Look at Ziggler with the ladder match and such. That would be great flow through. It would be a great way to bring her back to the product, it would be a great way to bring her back to be even more crazy than before and face Paige for the title and give me the match that I and everybody else want to see, but that was a bit of a tangent. Now, we're going to get a last man standing match at Payback between Bray Wyatt and John Cena, which is basically going to be John Cena versus the Wyatt family again. Now, is this going to be another Super Cena episode? Probably. Could we surround the entire ring with small children? that John Cena doesn't want to hit, but they will pull, up, put, pull out kendo sticks, and John Cena gets beaten up by the very children he's there to pander to. Wouldn't that be ironic? Oh, yes. Millions of millions of good things could happen at Payback. We already have Evolution vs. The Shield Part 2, and we already have Cena-Wyatt 3 in a Last Man Standing match. I am ordering Payback, and unlike most of you who sit there and talk about how a pay-per-view is not worth the money, I actually pay for them. Just saying. Oh yes, Batista versus Roman Reigns was what it was. It was two Mack trucks going at each other. Triple H attacks Roman Reigns, so I'm assuming Roman Reigns got the victory and I got another five points, or three points in my lottery. Oh yes. Shield and Evolution brawl for a little bit. Steph sends out the, the reinforcements, which is basically the team, the 11-man jobber team that Shield fought, like, how many weeks ago? Shield clears house with all of them, and it ends with a... Basically, I'm not going to call it a, a tr the triple powerbomb, the three-on-one powerbomb, whatever, because they are the hounds of justice. I don't care how corny this sounds. As far as I'm concerned, it is the justice bomb. So they hit the justice bomb on Ryback to close the show, and Evolution's up on the stage making angry face, and Daniel Bryan is nowhere in sight, and that's always a good way to end the show. Is it not? Daniel Bryan's gone. Alicia Fox is getting a push. Deluxe Man choke on it. Oh, yes. I've been spaz. Your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all my conversations going. Start new conversations. Add to my Q&A. Back a couple of videos ago. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. Hey, cheers. Now, I'm tagging out. Bye. Don't shine, you're a freak like me.